infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Now, as you know, uh, this radio show and the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, is focused on putting out news and information on infectious diseases and other and the related outbreaks. Now, timely global surveillance of infectious disease threats around the world is critical for governments and healthcare organizations, uh, businesses, because they need actionable intelligence. Now, Blue Dot is a company that does just that. So joining me now to talk about some current and past outbreaks and the work of Blue Dot is CEO Dr. Cameron Kahn. In addition, Dr. Khan is a practicing infectious disease physician and an associate professor of medicine with the Division of Infectious Diseases at the University of Toronto. Dr. Khan, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. It's great to be with you. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start off our talk with your thoughts on two measles outbreaks right now in different parts of the world. Uh, There's a massive one in Europe, and there's some big problems down in South America. Um, It's well publicized that Europe has seen some extraordinary numbers in 2018. What happened in Europe, and how did we get a grasp on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, more broadly speaking, we've been seeing a resurgence of measles in, in recent years. And I think for many of us, we sort of think of measles as a, perhaps something associated with our, our parents' generation. Uh, and really wasn't until the, the 1960s that a vaccine was developed and, and then measles became, you know, far, far less common. Um, I think what we're, we're seeing in, in a few different parts of the world are some trends. One of them happens to be this phenomenon we, we sometimes call vaccine hesitancy, which is that, you know, people may have uh, certain beliefs, whether they're religious beliefs or other types of beliefs about um, the impacts of vaccines. They're reluctant to uh, get themselves vaccinated. They may avoid having their children vaccinated. And then what we start to see is that there are pockets of the the population that are susceptible. They're not immune to this this virus. It turns out that measles is maybe one of the most contagious diseases uh, that are out there. And so if it finds a susceptible population, it really can spread like fire. Um, and so what we're seeing, I think, in Europe uh, is there have been cases, uh, you know, outbreaks on, on large scales, both in Western Europe as well as in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, in some instances, perhaps in, in areas uh, like the Ukraine, which is having a very large outbreak, um, you know, the, these also may have to do with public health infrastructure and capacity, uh, where the systems themselves may just not be as robust and uh, the vaccination programs might not be adequately resourced to be reaching out to the population and making sure that that people are getting vaccinated. Now, let's uh, switch gears to South America, and they're really seeing a measles explosion that's spilling over the borders uh, from Mm -hmm. the countries there, primarily uh, due to Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Um, Brazil's really catching the brunt of it. Some similarities to Europe, but some big differences. Yeah, and I think in in industrialized countries, what we tend to see a bit more of is the public health infrastructure is there, but we tend to see a bit more vaccine hesitancy, and that certain po- you know segments of the population are reluctant to be vaccinated. In in the case of Venezuela, we're seeing something completely different, which is the social and the in, uh, the health infrastructure is really crumbling, and the ability to see that people are adequately vaccinated is is just not there. Um, and I think you're right that what we see is the states, uh, you know, in, in, in South America, Brazil is experiencing a fairly large measles outbreak. And most of those cases are in the states that are really um, the share a border with Venezuela. So, uh, you know, and the strains that are being identified there seem to be linked. So this really does suggest to us that in this instance, it's really more about spillover um, as there is kind of an economic crisis happening in, in Venezuela. Uh, and as people are moving, uh, they are taking this virus uh, with them, and there are susceptible pockets of, of populations. There may be indigenous populations uh, at the borders, um, 
And, and ultimately, this virus is just moving with the movements of people. And, and this is really a phenomenon that uh, uh, we see on a local scale, uh, as in the case of uh, Venezuela and Brazil, but also increasingly as people have access to travel around the world, uh, these viruses in uh, short order can, uh, can find their way halfway around the world. Yeah, and especially something that is as contagious as measles is. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's go ahead and... Uh Talk about Blue Dot. Um, Mm -hmm. Can you give the audience an introduction of the work that you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Blue Dot um, is, uh, if I were to kind of put it in the simplest terms, uh, I would uh, say that we are trying to be the, like the, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, global weather network, if you will, for infectious diseases. Uh, Blue Dot really came out of my experience uh, back in 2003 in Toronto. Uh, I had just been finishing my medical training in infectious diseases and public health. Uh, I came back to Toronto, and shortly after I got here, uh, we had the SARS outbreak. Um, and uh, that was really something as a frontline healthcare worker was a kind of an eye-opening experience to see this virus cripple our city for uh, about four months. Uh, some of my colleagues got infected. We had, um, you know, the World Health Organization issued an advisory against travel to um, to the city, and so there were, you know, billions in, in, in economic uh, losses that occurred. And so Blue Dot really has been, uh, a, we are a digital health company that is tracking infectious disease outbreaks and threats around the world. But more importantly, we're using big data and advanced analytics like artificial intelligence to help put these threats into context, uh, to understand uh, which of these threats are likely to become larger and more significant, uh, which are likely to spread, where might they go, which population are vulnerable, um, you know, what would be the most effective ways of countering these threats. And so Blue Dot is really generating insights to help governments, to help the private sector against the financial impacts of infectious diseases, and also to support frontline healthcare workers in the public in protecting themselves and, and those around them. Yep. And um, Blue Dot really made its mark um, in uh, two of the bigger outbreaks uh, of recent years, uh, the West Africa Ebola outbreak and you made a prediction about Zika in Florida. Can you talk mm. about these two situations? Sure. You know, I think the, the scenario of Zika is perhaps maybe a, a particularly uh, a telling one. Um, you know, we had been building our capacity, our data platform, our analytics platform for uh, for some time, and we had also been tracking the spread of Zika across the Pacific. Uh, it had been kind of island hopping, if you will, towards Latin America, and we knew when the first cases were being recognized in Brazil that we had a fully susceptible population. No one had ever really been exposed to this virus before. We had widespread um, uh, existence of the mosquito Aedes aegypti that transmits Zika virus and, and the right climate and, and uh, climate conditions for uh, for this uh, for a massive outbreak to occur. So what we actually did in that situation was we brought very diverse data together to put this into context. Data on the mosquito, data on the uh, climate conditions that would tell us if, if this virus could spread through the mosquito. And then we actually brought in all of this information on every airport in Brazil, all of the travelers moving out of uh, Brazil. So we we actually have data on about 4 billion flight itineraries of travelers every year. Um, And we mapped out the distribution of where people would be going, whether the mosquitoes themselves would be in the destinations of those areas, uh, and whether it could trigger an outbreak. Just very briefly, I should say that Zika is something where if a mosquito infects a person, the person can then travel to another part of the world. The virus can then be flowing through their bloodstream, and then they can infect a mosquito in another location. We had identified southern Florida as being a vulnerable location uh, more than six months before the first cases of Zika were being reported in Wynwood County uh, in Miami. Uh, and that was really by being able to see how people were traveling out of uh, out of Brazil, um, where Zika were circulating, uh, where the mosquito was pr- present, where the climate conditions were suitable, uh, and so that was one of those instances where we were were very proud to be um, be able to uh, uh, you know is, you know put these uh, predictions together, even in fact before the World Health Organization had declared Zika to be a global emergency, um, and really had identified. Miami as a, as a vulnerable place for an outbreak more than six months before the outbreak actually arrived. And, and how about the Ebola outbreak? 
I think the Ebola outbreak was one really where, uh, in that situation, I think we were, you know, really able to try and help put um, a lot of the fear in context. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, you may recall that there was almost a global epidemic of fear that was occurring around Ebola spreading. Uh, Countries were starting to... um, uh, uh, stop flights from coming from West Africa and, and travelers. Um, and what we did in that situation was we used data on the world's air travel to uh, try and put into perspective the kind of degree of risk that we'd be talking about uh, so that uh, countries weren't overreacting or overcompensating to to the risk uh, in that situation. Um, but I think, you know, in that situation, certainly it was mostly about the spread of disease through travelers. In the case of Zika, it was a far more complex analysis involving mosquitoes and climate conditions and travelers um, that, um, that, you know, where we were able to, to, to use our analytics and our data to, to be a little more anticipatory uh, and a little less reactive. So, uh, Dr. Khan, so what, what's catching your eye today in September of 2018? Well, I think there are a number of issues of uh, concern that are out there. One of the viruses that we're quite concerned about is is yellow fever. Uh, And, you know, we've been concerned about this for some time. It has, you know, a lot of parallels and similarities to Zika virus because uh, it um, is transmitted by the same mosquito. Uh, Travelers themselves can inadvertently carry this disease to different parts of the world. And, uh, we have been seeing larger outbreaks uh, in parts of Brazil, uh, also approaching and, and getting closer to some of the big urban areas. The fear really there is that if we have an outbreak of yellow fever in a ma- major urban area, now it's really in a place where it has the ability to rapidly disseminate and, and, and spread to different parts of the world. Um, and one of the biggest fears is that while we haven't really seen any local spread of yellow fever in Asia in, in the past, past, um, we have in recent years seen travelers who are carrying yellow fever virus uh, actually show up in urban areas in Asia. And of course, we have mega cities there that are, are massive. Um, and if an outbreak were to occur in, uh, in Asia, in a large urban center, that would be uh, you know, a, a catastrophic outcome. Uh, I think the other reason for concern is that the world is still in the midst of a yellow fever vaccine shortage. And so, you know, the, the main weapon we have available to fight this virus is uh, uh, our supplies are, are more limited. Uh, and so we're, I think we're kind of at a bit of a, a vulnerable period. We're also now at a point where as the northern hemisphere enters into the fall and, and in the winter, uh, the southern hemisphere and in particular areas in Brazil will be uh, going into their summer months. Um, and this is the time when we, uh, we might see more, um, you know, the reappearance of yellow fever virus. Very good. Well, let's go ahead and uh, look at some of the products that Blue Dot offers. And first, there's Explorer. Mm -hmm. Uh, What is it and what does it do? Mm -hmm. So Explorer is a tool that is designed for government agencies. And, um, you know, if we if we think about um, uh, government agencies that are responsible for protecting their citizens against the you know growing number of infectious disease threats that we see showing up in the world today. And this tool is uh, one that we designed for health officials. It offers them a real-time view of infectious disease uh, threats and, and outbreaks that are appearing around the world. Uh, but more importantly, it provides them with access to really clean, diverse, integrated data from multiple different sources, from real-time information on meteorological conditions uh, through satellites to, as I mentioned earlier, billions of uh, passenger flight itineraries. So we can really get a panoramic view of what threats are out there, how might they spread, and and who's particularly vulnerable. Uh, And so government agencies, and we currently have uh, 10 countries using uh, this particular tool, can better assess the risks that are out there, what threats they pose to their citizens, and then, of course, how do they use their finite resources to, um, you know, to respond respond to these in the most appropriate way. Uh, in fact, actually, I was going to say we used Explorer in 2016, speaking of the Zika outbreak, uh, and we used it to map out the spread of, of the virus across the Americas um, uh, back in January of 2016. So again, uh, prior to the World Health Organization um, declaring Zika to be an emergency. And, and I think one of the reasons we were able to do that is that this tool allows us to do in a few minutes what in the past used to take us a few months. Right. So while Explorer is really geared toward public health and security, 
You also offer another product called Zebra, which is mm. more geared toward health organizations. Right. So as a frontline healthcare worker myself, one of the things that I saw during uh, the SARS outbreak here in Toronto was that um, frontline healthcare workers were getting infected with this virus. Uh, in fact, one of my colleagues got infected with SARS uh, back in 2003 and nearly, uh, nearly died. Um, and so uh, there's an adage in medicine that, uh, you know, was coined by an American physician that uh, basically says, when you, when you hear hoofbeats, think of horses, not zebras. Uh, that term was coined in 1948, and, and the physician who coined it was basically teaching his, his residents to, uh, to think about common things and, and don't think about unusual or, or perhaps even tropical types of diseases. But, of course, the world has changed a lot in the last 70 years, and physicians now and healthcare workers are... Uh, um, their patients are traveling all across the globe. And so what Zebra is doing is it's taking information about outbreaks around the world and in a way that's never been done before, it is automating all of the connections of those outbreaks to the whole world's air travel. And so any healthcare worker who is, if you will, in the path of a potential outbreak or a threat, um, they don't even have to look for information. Information will just find them and they will receive a notification that says, Here's a heads up. There's an outbreak of disease X happening halfway around the world. You might not have been aware of it. You might not have even ever heard of this disease before. But here's how it presents. Here's what it looks like. Here's how you would recognize it. Um, and here's how to think, if you will, of that metaphorical zebra. Uh, ultimately, what we are trying to do with zebra is to spread information faster and spread knowledge faster than the disease and really empowering frontline healthcare workers to do two things. One is to protect themselves so they don't get infected, um, as we saw in previous outbreaks, not just SARS, but MERS, Ebola, the, there have been multiple instances, but also so they can recognize the disease and prevent an outbreak from happening. Um, an astute clinician can isolate a patient, make sure that they're not spreading the disease to the others in the hospital, prevent an outbreak. Um, and so what we're really trying to do is elevate all the healthcare workers' um, um, astuteness and awareness of these threats uh, so that they can detect and recognize diseases they may have never seen in, in, in their clinical uh, experience. All right. And I got about two minutes left of a hard break. Um, sure. So lastly, I want to talk about the app that you have for travelers. It's called George. Mm -hmm. And I've actually downloaded this. I haven't used it yet, but uh, can you talk about that? Sure. Well, George is meant uh, for the billions of us that board commercial flights and travel around the world. And whether we're traveling for business or pleasure or to visit friends and relatives, none of us want to get sick. And George, um, it basically is empowering uh, travelers with um, personalized health information on wherever they happen to be or wherever they're going. So they can look up any location or it'll access your current location, tell you what types of infectious disease risks are around you, and, and then personalize the information to you and, and tell you a little bit about what kinds of interventions you could take to protect yourself, whether it's a, a medical intervention like a vaccine or behavioral modification of things you can do to protect yourself. Our ultimate goal at Blue Dot is that if we can put this information in the hands of travelers, not only is that protecting them, but they're less likely to then carry diseases around the world and, and the world becomes a safer place in turn. Um, so this is uh, this is ultimately our our goal with uh, with George is to, to to put these types of insights into individuals' hands. Good stuff, really good stuff. And for the audience who would like to learn more about Blue Dot and their products, visit them at Blue Dot Dot Global. And I want to thank you, Dr. Cameron Khan, for your time and your expertise. And I hope you come back on someday, sir. Thank you very much. It was uh, great to be with you. Thank you.